Fallout 76 has received a lot of negative criticism online, and I've personally heard a lot of long-time Fallout fans talking about how it will ruin the franchise. Today, I want to pitch to you that it will in fact do the opposite. Not only do I think it will be a very enjoyable Fallout game, but I'm certain it will bring the Fallout series to a new audience. A quick aside before the video begins, a huge thank you to Camel for allowing content creators to use his pre-beta footage of 76 in their videos. I highly recommend you head over to Camelworks and watch his content. As well as the standard Fallout 76 analysis videos you would expect, he's also uploaded his full, uncut, pre-beta footage, which I highly recommend you take a look at if you want to see what the game will actually be like. Links to his channel and that video are in the description. Before I start talking about the positives of 76, I do want to address the concerns about the game that could turn a fair few players away. As excited and hopeful as I am for the project, I am aware that plenty of people won't want to pick up the game at launch for some very valid reasons. Seemingly the biggest issue people have is that 76 is an always online experience. The overwhelming majority of Fallout titles have been single player, and there's a decent chunk of a community who don't want other people in their Fallout game. They enjoy the solo experience, being the main character and following a more structured world. Additionally, there are plenty of people who live in areas with terrible internet connection, who feel that the always online component of the game will literally make it unplayable for them. A very real concern. If this is an issue for you, then I think you shouldn't pre-order the game, and might not want to pick up the game at all. Your concerns are valid, and in my eyes, this is the biggest downside of the game. I love multiplayer games, but they're not for everyone. Now I'm going to talk about another big concern that I've been seeing frantically discussed, and that is the game lore. This isn't entirely unprecedented either. Bethesda doesn't always stick to the law. Jet appearing in pre-war sealed vaults is an example of this. In Fallout 2, Jet had only relatively recently been created, so having it show up pre-war was definitely an oversight on Bethesda's part. The two concerns I've seen recently for 76's lore is super mutants and mention of the Brotherhood of Steel. Bethesda have already added in additional locations where super mutants were created, so we're no longer dealing with just the Master's army. We could feasibly have another location in West Virginia that was experimenting with FEV, which led to yet another super mutant faction. This seems to be the point that the community at large is slightly more accepting of. We've already had this law break happen, so it's not as controversial anymore. The big point now seems to be why there's mention of the Brotherhood in West Virginia. In order for this to be able to happen, members of the Brotherhood would have had to travel almost across the full width of America, going about 2,500 miles over the space of 25 years. Nowadays, that would not be difficult. The journey can potentially be done over just a couple of days of driving. Traversing a nuclear ravaged wasteland is a much more difficult challenge, but it could be possible. I have spent hours upon hours scouring over Fallout lore and asking various Fallout fans and experts alike to find out if this is lore friendly, and technically, it could have happened. We have a space between November of 2077 and the year 2134 where we don't really know what the Brotherhood was doing. A lot of members of the community have assumed they had been in total isolation during this time, but I have been unable to find any information that actually confirms this. I'll have all my research sites cited in the description of this video, and if you can find proof against this, do let me know. But for now at least, it does seem like some of the Brotherhood could have made their way to West Virginia. When we get right down to it though, this isn't going to ruin the game for most people playing it. The big lore fans will be annoyed if things aren't properly explained, but a lot of players are just going to be happy to still have super mutants and brotherhood in the game, as it makes it feel more like Fallout. I think that's probably enough time dedicated to the concerns of the game. I'm sure plenty of you have other issues, but it's time for me to start explaining why I think Fallout 76 is going to be successful. First off is the fact it's a multiplayer game instead of single player. Generally speaking, multiplayer games are much easier to make money from in the long term. With a single player game, you get the initial release and then any DLC coming out after, and that's pretty much it. This only provides a couple of basic revenue streams, but doesn't offer much extended publicity. Multiplayer games on the other hand are much easier to monetize with microtransactions, and we already know that 76 is going to have cosmetic microtransactions at launch. This adds in an easy way to make more money from players day in and day out. Instead of people paying one upfront price and having the full game, there's constantly new stuff coming out for them to spend money on. Microtransactions may be despised by a large and vocal community of gamers, but that doesn't stop them being effective. 
Just take a look at Fortnite and Overwatch. Both have been insanely profitable thanks to players being willing to keep paying money for skins and emotes. Constantly having new content dropping for a game helps to keep it relevant too. God of War was a highly reviewed and well-loved single player title, and yet I haven't heard anyone talk about it in anything more than a passing reference for months. Without regular updates, there's nothing new for people to do in the game, and they stop playing it, but yet there's still people playing plenty of multiplayer games as they're constantly being updated and there's more of a social aspect. When 76 was revealed as a multiplayer title, I had friends, subscribers and other YouTubers all talking about wanting to play the game with me. At the release of Fallout 4, I had a couple of friends talking about it, but there wasn't anywhere near as much of a reason for us to discuss the game. Sure, we were all going to play it, but our actions in the game weren't going to have an effect on each other, so it was purely something for us to do when we didn't want to socialise. Now we have a Fallout title where people can not only play on their own, but also squad up with their friends and have a social experience with each other. As much as some of us do enjoy avoiding all interaction with others, it can't be avoided that humans are social creatures, and we have an innate desire to make friends and be with other people, be it in a physical location or a digital one. The fact that 76 is multiplayer does mean it's a bit of a departure for the series though, and change has a habit of causing people to feel fear. We're all comfortable with things staying the same, but something different can sometimes be unsettling. It's worth saying that Bethesda have done well whenever it comes to making drastic changes to the Fallout franchise. When Fallout 3 came out, there was a hardcore community of Interplay fans who were angry that the game was going 3D and had more of a focus on FPS mechanics as opposed to skill checks and probability roles. Despite this, Fallout 3 rapidly outperformed Fallout 2, and for a lot of current Fallout fans, myself included, this was their first venture into the series. Fallout 4 was also criticised for focusing more on the FPS element, as opposed to the RPG element, yet the game had sold millions more units than Fallout 3. The game that really has the staggering figures though, is the biggest departure of a franchise. Fallout Shelter. The mobile Fallout title had exceeded over 100 million downloads back in September of 2017, and is still going strong today. The next most played Fallout title, Fallout 4, only had a measly 13.89 million sales as of February 2018, according to Statista. Just like how Fallout 3 was the first experience of a franchise for a lot of gamers, plenty of new Fallout fans will have come from Fallout Shelter, a very drastic change to the formula that the hardcore fanbase know and love. These drastic changes to the series helped keep things fresh and attract new players. I have plenty of friends who had no real interest in the single player role playing experience, but who are picking up 76, as it's a game more suited to their interests. By constantly mixing things up, Bethesda have helped keep drawing in new players, instead of going down the route of many franchises, and sticking to the same formula each time, whilst watching their player base slowly drift away. This ties in to my final point of why I think the game will be Bethesda's most successful to date. Casual players are the majority of gamers. They're the ones who boost up all the sale figures, who buy just a few games a year and don't watch every video that Kado or Camel upload. They're the ones who watch the trailer, hear people talking about a new Fallout game, and decide that's what they're going to play. They might have never played a game in the series before, or could have been one of millions who have their first experience with Fallout 4, and they just want a multiplayer version of that game. To them, the interplay days are utterly irrelevant, and even New Vegas may well mean nothing to them. To them, they care most about hype, and boy oh boy has 76 got a ton of hype going. If you take a look at Bethesda Softworks YouTube page, the most popular video is the 76 official trailer, raking in 32 million views in 4 months. The Fallout 4 trailer only got 22 million, and Skyrim is way back at 8.1 million. Obviously YouTube has become more prominent over the years, which helps contribute to this, but the numbers are still there. 76 has got everyone talking, and that in turn is directing the attention of gamers of all types straight to it. The hardcore old school Fallout and New Vegas Fallout fans may not be happy about what Bethesda is doing with the series, but whilst they're in the minority, it won't cause the game to fail. Ultimately, I feel the true success of this game is it lets us know Bethesda wants to keep innovating. If I'm wrong and the game ends up failing to meet its critical and commercial goals, it still will be an important learning process for the staff at Bethesda. They'll have experience making a very different Fallout title, and from it they can work out what worked well and what didn't. This in turn will help to lead to Fallout 5 being a much better game than if it just followed on straight from Fallout 4. 
I truly do believe that Fallout 76 is going to be one of the biggest games in the franchise, but I could well be wrong. Let me know what your opinions on the game are in the comments. Do you think it will be a game played by Fallout fans for years to come, or just a short-lived hype fest? If you think I've presented a compelling argument, hit the like button. And if you want more Fallout content in the future, make sure you're subscribed and have hit the notification bell too. As always, thanks for watching. Sarge out.